right now it feels like the house is a bit on fire. Ultimately, I think it really, it really boils down to the idea that higher education, because of, of COVID-19 and the, the cascading implications of it, we're moving from a phase of industry, the industry experiencing disruption at the margins, essentially. I mean, we will, we will feel nostalgic for the day we talked about disruption and, and a demographic cliff happening or some shifts in who our students were or some changes in, in, in federal policies because it affected pockets of, of the institution. Um, you know, there'd be a specific process in recruitment or a specific process in financial aid that we'd have to restructure or kind of reimagine how it was worked. But we're moved now from disruption at the margins in our industry to more wholesale dislocation of, of the industry. So the purpose of higher education is being reconsidered. And if what the actual service is, is being reimagined the who the customers are is being kind of kind of redef redefined so it's less about kind of change in pockets and kind of a, a, a total reimagining of of the industry kind of almost think about what happened to perhaps the the media industry know, three years ago kind of five years ago with the kind of introduction of hulu and netflix and and, and all those types of of players we're having a similar kind of moment in, in, in higher education. And so how does an industry then contend with that? How do they grapple with it? How do they ensure, how do individual institutions ensure they don't slip beneath the water um, and that they kind of move fast in a boat kind of across, across this water? And I think it comes down to, from a, a, a technology perspective, that the solutions and the technology that they need to be have to be um, fundamentally more flexible. Kind of the flexibility needs to be on a scale that is un, unprecedented because we don't know what the future is going to be. We don't know what the new new normal, and I can't believe I just said that, um, is, is going to be. There may not be kind of a normal, no return to the to the mean um, or the median ever, 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 ever again. And it also then means that we need to have far more insight. Um, and, and, and data than we'd ever had before. Because if you're gonna move kind of quickly in new directions with precision, you need to know where you are, where you wanna be, what the kind of implications are of that. So it's kind of insight and data and, and predictive kind of peaks around the corner kind of at the time of, of decision, decision making. And these systems need to connect together, um, not, not in just a simple, Let's integrate the student system with the learning management system. We've got that. We figured out kind of how to how to do that. It's more how do we connect the student system with Zoom so that an advisor can have a kind of kind of click to video conference experience with a student who is now in um, London as opposed to Pittsburgh to talk about which courses they should take. Um, and that course may or may not be kind of within their university. It might be kind of a, a, a third party um, kind of university. So kind of that, that connection between the systems, that availability of data and insight, and a profoundly different understanding of what flexibility kind of should be with those systems. It's a moving target, might, might, might we say, um, kind of over the spring and into the summer, um, from the very top, from, from Larry Ellison, our founder at Oracle, to kind of Steve Miranda, who heads up applications, the number one priority, and it was communicated to us six ways to Sunday, was we need to keep the technology going and on and no baubles so that our customers can worry about their core mission. We can't have ERP kind of, kind of stumbling, we can't have outages, we can't have 
kind of poor code going out the door because all of these things are so much more important in a crisis environment. We need our customers. We need our customers to have the space to be laser focused on their customers. So let us take care of the technology. Now we're always worrying about that at a place at a place like Oracle, but kind of under the circumstances, we kind of swept away any distractions. Like that needs to be the number one. But kind of now we're in in a phase where in a place where we are thinking about how do we build kind of better better technology for um, our customers so that they can find that agility and, and resiliency. How do we give them kind of the tools that they need to do the scenario kind of planning, um, the scenario budgeting, um, the ability to deliver kind of kind of a hybrid and high flex kind of courses and handle the administrative kind of elements of it. Now, some of that is new technology, like I said, um, and some of that is to kind of use a kind of a silly, silly phrase, but I think a meaningful one for everyone kind of out there is how do we help them shop their Oracle closet because they have a lot of Oracle technology kind of already um, in play at their, at their institutions. And are there ways that they can use what they have just better? Um, and so we've spent a lot of time with our, our value realization teams, with our product managers, with our, our customer support folks to kind of help our customers use what they have just just better because it's a hard time right now financially um, for, for, for higher education. So maybe you don't need to kind of buy new technology. Maybe you can just use, use what you have or shop, shop your closet.